Hugh Compton Lord was born in Manterville, Minnesota. His father was a well-respected judge there who became famous after presiding over the trial of the infamous Younger Brothers. Hugh's childhood was comfortable enough and full of books and carefree days of exploration. Well, that all changed in 1880 when, at the age of 13, both of Lord's parents died. The authorities sent Lord to an uncle's lumber mill in Dunkirk, New York, where his uncle assigned him to a crew of Italian immigrant toughs who didn't care much for the impressionable and soft new member of their crew. The work was severe, the pay was low, and the hours were long. At 15, Lord escaped and walked 80 miles to Meadville, where his mother's family took him in and helped him find work as a blacksmith's apprentice. After a year of smithing, Lord moved to Erie. He had the equivalent of a sixth grade education and hadn't been in a classroom for nearly four years, but he convinced the principal of the old Erie High School to accept him as a student, and after only two years, graduated with honors. For Lord, graduation was an accelerant. He got a job reading and investigating law for State Senator Emery Walling. He taught night school and became a U.S. Marshal. In 1890, he was accepted to the Erie County Bar Association and opened a firm of his own that specialized in patent and trademark law. Lord was only 23. He married and started a family. He was a dreamer, living the American dream. It's important to note that at the turn of the century, Erie was bucolic, an American pastoral scene like something from Courier and Ives. Industrialization and mass transportation changed all that, though, and overnight, Erie became a busy metropolis. In 1914, Ford Motors was producing a new car every 15 minutes, and Lord's quiet West Fifth Street neighborhood turned into a cacophony of horns, backfires, and worst of all, metal on metal squeaks and rattles. The racket was maddening, so much so that Lord began to dedicate all of his energies and free time to finding a solution. It took five years and 15 patents, but Hugh Lord finally lit upon a resolution based on an impossible notion, bonding rubber to metal. He opened a shop here on East 11th Street, hired six employees and began making prototypes of devices that would isolate and control shock and noise and vibration. After three years of trial and error, the company got its first job for the General Electric Company to produce rubber mounts for trolley car air compressors. The next orders came from Nash and Lincoln for engine mounts and other rubber on metal products to absorb vibration. As decibel levels began to reduce on West 5th Street, the Great Depression gripped the nation, and Lord's law practice was the young company's main source of funding. Lord kept the company in the black. Finally, after 10 years of operating in the red, Lord Manufacturing recorded its first profit with the sale of a new suspension system to Hup Motors, makers of the popular Hup Mobile. The company grew and moved a level manufacturing place and then to the open fields of West 12th and Green Garden. Today, Lord Corporation is located at 49 different sites in 26 countries. Its products are in commercial and private aircraft, missile systems, tanks and artillery, on the farm, under the sea, and in outer space. With annual sales exceeding $610 million, Lord Corporation is a worldwide leader born out of the courage and innovative skills of one man. Hugh Lord died in 1952. At the time of his death, he held over 100 patents.